Can, is it okay? Can you hear me? Okay. Thank you very much for the this opportunity that you have given me to share the, the Lord's Supper. It's really a privilege. I'm honored and I'm happy. Thank you very much. So let's grab our miracle meal. Start by the take the bread, the body of Christ. And uh, I remember last time the servant of God. She told us that, um, you know, the, um, the miracle meal, everything, whatever is it that you desire, everything that we desire will have it in this miracle meal. So as we are breaking this bread, we're going to hold on the scripture in the book of Luke 24. I love that scripture so much that she gave us, that Jesus took the bread he broke it and he gave it to the disciples and their eyes were open. So as we are breaking this bread and as we are taking it, I'm praying that our eyes will be open so that we'll see the whole wonderful things out of the world, the promises that he has for us in his word. It will come to pass in our life as we take this bread. So let's take it in Jesus name. After that, he took the cup. That was his blood. That was for the forgiveness of our sins. And uh, we know that in the book of Psalms 103, I'm going to read it. I'll not paraphrase it. Psalms 103, verse 3. Psalms 103 verse 3 says, Who forgive all thy iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. So after he forgives our sins, he healed us. So as we are taking the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, I want us to meditate upon this blood of Jesus, that he has forgiven all our sins, and that tonight, Wherever you are feeling your body a type, just believe and trust in him that as you are taking this blood of Jesus, any form of sickness, any form of disease, whatever it may be, any hardship, any lack, any stagnation, any retardation, any empty handed, any challenges that you are going through as you are taking the blood of Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus Christ will cleanse everything. It will purify it, it will sanctify it. And through it, we are going to receive strength. We are going to receive vitality to continue to do the work of our Father in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's take the blood. Amen. Thank you so much, Mr. Major. And then thank you so much. I just want to use this opportunity. Thank you very much to my pastor. I'm truly grateful. Amen. Amen. Pastor Isa, is it okay? Can we continue? You already passed the button. So I was like, okay, that's fine. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay. Welcome family once again. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. You know, you would have been anywhere, you would have chosen to be anywhere else this night, but you chose to do life with us tonight. So we're so grateful. And I also just want to use this moment to say thank you to Pastor Issa. Thank you for the opportunity to minister on the Kabod platform. 
I'm very grateful and I truly honor you. Amen. So tonight, um, we have received the Lord's Supper through our sister Miranda, and I believe we'll be blessed by her ministration. So what we plan on doing this night is what we had begun on May 20th. On May 20th, we actually began talking about the four-dimensional growth of a disciple. And our goal was to examine dimension detailly so that we can now incorporate it into our lives and make it a reality. Amen. So today I chose to, be to begin with um, favor with people. Amen. Our base text, like we all remember for those who were part of the meeting um, on May 20th, our base text was Luke 2. So, and it says, and Jesus kept increasing in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and, and people. Amen. Um, I'm just going to read this text from many other translations. The NIV puts it this way, a more common and familiar way that we know it. And Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. The English Standard Version says this, and Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. The Berean Literal Bible puts it this way, and Jesus continued to advance in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. The contemporary English version puts it this way, Jesus became wise and he grew strong and, was, and God was with him and so were the people. And the Young's literal translation says this, and Jesus was advancing in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and men, amen. I just thought I should bring out the different translations so that we can see and familiarize ourselves with this text because we are going to um, dwell on this text for quite a long time, amen. This particular series, uh, Favor with People, may last us maybe two or three parts, amen. Just We're just going to go by the speed of the Holy Ghost, amen. So just a quick recap from May 20th. We looked at Luke 2.52 and we um, extrapolated from the NIV. And Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Amongst many things that we said, we said Jesus grew, uh, grew in wisdom and that's the intellectual and he grew in stature and that was the physical and in favor with God, spiritual. And then he also grew in favor with man and that's the social. And what we also did last two weeks or, or say four weeks ago actually, is that we examined our growth pattern as believers or as disciples specifically. We, we, I think each person on the platform on that day actually talked about their growth pattern, whether they were a 1D, a 2D, or a 3D, or a four-dimensional growth, amen. And the question we asked is, what can we do to improve? We all spoke for those who were present, and we also asked, how can we help and support? And everybody was honest and transparent about the kind of help that they needed, amen. So today, we're just going to go into the fourth part, actually. This is exactly how the Lord led me to choose it. Typically, I would like to go from growth in wisdom, then stature, favor with God and favor with man. But I was instructed to start with favor with man. And of course, like we see the title, I pulled out the scripture from the New American Standard Bible because I liked the way it was captioned. It says, and Jesus kept increasing. He kept increasing, meaning that if Jesus keeps increasing in something, it's, it's a, a call, a wake up call for us to find out if we are increasing Amen. In those areas that Jesus continues to increase in. So Jesus kept increasing in wisdom. He kept increasing in stature and he kept increasing in favor with God and he kept increasing in favor with people. Amen. So today, like I said, we're going to talk about how to increase in favor with people. And we are going to, in this series, we're going to examine 10 biblical patterns on how to keep increasing in favor with people. 10. So then we may only cover a few, very few. And like I said, we're going by the speed of the Holy Ghost and based on our understanding as well. Amen. So 10 biblical patterns, because the Bible has made provision for us on how to keep increasing 
in favor with people meaning that it is an ongoing process if today you're you are favored by a person and tomorrow you're not favored something happened and that door of favor was shut amen so it's we thank god for the word of god which gives us insight on how to make corrections in our lives and also how to improve and continue to experience the blessings that he expects for us to experience amen so before we get into um, the first point, I just want us to ask ourselves and answer this question. What is favor? Amen. What is favor? There are many definitions to what favor is, but for the um, purpose of our study today and the next few weeks, we are going to dwell with these particular definitions. First, I looked up the definition of favor from the dictionary. Amen. And it says, Favor is approval, favor is support or liking of someone or something. Pretty straightforward. When a person is approved, we're talking about people, right? Not things. So when a person is approved or when a person receives support or when a person is being liked by someone or by people, you call that situation or that scenario favor, amen. And the dictionary definition also says that it is an act of kindness beyond what is due or usual, meaning that if a person, because we are talking about people, when a person goes an extra, super extra, triple extra mile for you, amen, more than you deserve, that particular act is called favor, amen. I also heard it being defined as this, and I really like this caption, that favor can also be defined as when someone is willing to invest their life, amen, um, their time, their resources, credibility to help you achieve your goals, amen. When someone is willing to um, invest their life time, their resources, their credibility to help you achieve your goals. Amen. Now, with these definitions in mind, the question we need to ask ourselves is this. Are we truly favored by people? Can you and I say today that there is a person or people who are willing to invest their life, their time, their resources, their credibility to help you achieve your goals? These are the areas that Jesus expects us to grow, favor with people, so that to the end that the person or people are willing, or group of people or organizations are willing to invest whatever it takes, such as you, me, achieve the goals that God has deposited within us. We see that throughout the work of Jesus Christ, amen, that people were willing to um, invest their life to make sure that the cause that Jesus Christ has been called to succeeds. Think about the many people who died because of the gospel, because of the kingdom, um, the kingdom, amen? The many people who desire to see the kingdom established here on earth to a place where they decided to die for the cause. Think about Stephen who died. Think about James who was killed. Think about Peter who was imprisoned. Think about Daniel who refused to bow, Mordecai, the list goes on and on. And they all did, everything that they did was so that the goal of the kingdom could be achieved. Meaning that even though Jesus Christ is dead and gone physically, he has not stopped increasing in favor with man, with people, amen. So this is not a thing of, well, when Jesus Christ was here, then this happened to him, you know, and now that he is gone, it no longer happens. But it is something that continues to happen even when he's not walking physically here on earth. And because we carry him in us, it therefore means that we need to also increase in the areas that he increases in. Amen. It's a call for examination. Because if we are not, we don't have people in our lives who are willing to do this for us, then something needs to be done in order to activate that aspect. Amen. And we thank God for the word of God that has provided for us patterns on how to activate favor in our lives. Amen. So there is hope for everybody. If you, if you say that is my story, you know, I don't think I'm favored. I cannot point a single person who is willing to go all out for me. I cannot point a single organization that is willing to go all out for me. Then 
Today is the day for us to rectify that together so that we grow together and help other people using the word of God as our guide. Now, what do I want to establish here before we talk about the first point? That favor is a principle, amen? It's a principle. Usually principles are guiding rules, amen? That guide a, a person's life. They are belief systems, amen? Now, when it comes to favor, there are guiding rules to activate favor in the life of a person. Amen. So more than a miracle, favor is a principle, meaning that miracles may happen every now and then. But favor, once you lose it, you can go back to the word of God, find out what was not what has been missing, activate it by the principle of the word of God, which comes by relationship activated and then now it becomes your reality amen now favor also is a response it is how a person will respond to a situation based on how you implement the principle amen so it is a response it's an action you respond amen you can respond with an act of favor based on x y and z that have been put in place amen and beloved the most lasting kind of favor is the favor that is being activated by the principles of the word we truly, truly, truly want to use the word of God as the means through which we activate favor, amen. We don't want to use worldly standards because worldly standards will fail us eventually, amen. And they wouldn't produce the kind of fruits that we so desire for our lives to have, amen. Now, the third thing here is this, favor could be miraculous, meaning that it could be unmerited. Favor could be miraculous. It could be unmerited, meaning that um, at a given point in our lives and for everyone, especially who has actually believed Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you are, that, that group of people have experienced um, favor, unmerited favor, amen? As much as favor can be unmerited, favor can also be merited. That is the reason why we go back to the aspect of principles. Yes, there is a dimension of favor that is unmerited, but I really want to introduce to us the dimension of favor, which is merited. So when you look at favor beyond it being unmerited, remember that favor is merited as well. And we will see from the 10 points that we'll be sharing over the weeks, how we can activate that favor and then merit it in the process. Amen. Amen. Now, here I have a little note. I say here that we are responsible for activating favor in our lives. Truly we are. And God has made provisions for us. Amen. So with that being established, I would like us to look at the very first point, which we will dwell here for a very long time. The first biblical pattern on how to keep increasing in favor with people is to have favor with God, to find favor with God. Amen. That is the very first, very, 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 very first thing. Very, very first pattern. Because once we lose favor with God, we lose favor with everything, everything everyone amen so the first aspect is favor with god and i want us to take our time to examine how we can um develop favor what it takes to develop favor with god so that as a result we can now begin to experience favor with mankind amen and we are going to look at biblical um case studies to see how these people activated their favor with God, then as a result, they benefited from their favor with man. Amen. Now, let's take a look at Proverbs 16, verse 7. I read this to us from the King James Version. The Bible says, when a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. Amen. When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. I want to believe that many of us are familiar with this particular portion of scripture, but I just want us to look at it a bit closer, amen. The first thing we need to understand is who is our enemy? Because until you know your enemy, amen, you will not really know if you're experiencing favor with that person or not, amen. 
you wouldn't really know if you were, you were in position to receive from that person or not. But the Bible is giving us a prerequisite on how to receive favor from our enemies. And we know that enemy or enemies is a person or a group of people, amen? It has to do with people. Now it says when a man's ways, meaning that when your ways or my ways please God, God will make our enemy or our enemies to be at peace with us. But the question is, how can we make our ways pleasing to God such that we can guarantee that our enemies will be at peace with us, whether or not we know our enemies? Now, the first thing that was very intriguing for me was to understand who is an enemy. An enemy is a person who is actively opposed or hostile to someone or something. I believe we all have a few of those in our lives, if not directly by association, because I was looking at looking up the different categories of, um, of enemy or enemies, and it says the enemies by association, amen. And then there are frenemies, as in friend and enemy, amen. And, and so on, the list just went on and on, amen. So it says an enemy is a person who is actively opposed or hostile to someone or something. So if you have a person or group of people who oppose you or who are hostile to you, amen, those people or that person is called your enemy, but there is a guarantee. God says that if you will make your ways pleasing to me, I will cause the people who actively oppose you and who are actively hostile to you to be at peace with you. To be at peace with you, not necessarily being your friends, but to be at peace with you. God wants to take charge. He wants to take responsibility over this, but on condition that our ways please him. Amen. So when next we quote this scripture, I want us to look at it very closely. There is a, there is a prerequisite. There is a condition. It's a conditional text. Amen. God is giving us a condition on how to deal with a category of people called enemies. And we have examined that enemies are people who actively oppose us and who are actively hostile towards us. This could be by association or not. Amen. Now, I want us to understand this particular point using three case studies. We're going to look at the life of Esther. We're going to look at the life of Daniel and also Joseph. Amen. And we're going to be doing a lot of reading for the purpose of understanding and for the benefit of those who do not um, know the storyline prior to now. Amen. So, now, Esther is our first case study, and I'm going to read for us Esther 2, 1 to 18. Then I'll come back and just extract a few points that speaks to the title of favor with people. So here I go. Um, Esther 2, 1 to 18, I read to us from the NIV. It says, later when King Xerxes' fury um, had subsided, he remembered Vashti and what she had done and what he had decreed about her. Now, where are we coming from? In chapter one of Esther, Queen Vashti was on the throne. King Xerxes had requested of her to come and display herself before his people, and she refused. And because of that, um, King Xerxes was advised and encouraged to dethrone Queen Vashti. Amen. And the, the, the throne could not be left empty. It had to be occupied by, by another person. So, but they had to do, they had to go through a very long process, I would say, in order to choose another person who will be queen, amen. So that's where we pick up with this story. Then verse two says that, then the king's personal attendants proposed, let a search be made for beautiful young virgins for the king. Let the king appoint commissioners in every province of his realm to bring all these beautiful young women into the harem at the citadel of Susa. Let them be placed under the care of Higai, the king's eunuch who is in charge of the women and let beauty treatments be given to them. Then let the young woman who pleased the king be queen instead of Vashti. This advice appealed to the king and he followed it. Now there was in the citadel of Susa a Jew of the tribe of Benjamin named Mordecai, son of Jer, the son of Shimei, and the son of Kish. 
Then he says, who had been carried into exile from Jerusalem by Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, among those taken captive with Jehoshin, king of Judah. Now, let me pause there. I want us to understand the scenario as we get into the details of the life of Esther. These people are exiles. They're in another man's land. So they are not friends, amen? We're speaking to the text that we just read earlier. They are not friends. But I want us to see how it is possible for us to receive favor from our enemies. That is the reason why we are reading this text. Now, verse 7 says this, Mordecai had a cousin named Hadassah. Mordecai is the cousin to Hadassah, not the uncle, amen, um, whom he had brought up because she, she had neither father nor mother. This young woman, who was also known as Esther, had a lovely figure and was beautiful. Mordecai had taken her as his own daughter when her father and mother died. When the king's order and edict had been proclaimed, many young women were brought to the citadel of Susa and put under the care of Higai. Esther also was, Esther also was taken to the king's palace and entrusted to Higai, who had charge of the harem. She pleased him and won his favor. Immediately, he provided her with her beauty treatments and special food. He assigned to her seven female attendants selected from the king's palace and moved her and her attendants into the best place in the harem. Esther had not revealed her nationality and family background because Mordecai had forbidden her to do so. Amen. Because they were not friends. Amen. Um, if she had to reveal her identity earlier, it would cost her. So we pick up from verse 11, the Bible says, every day he walked back and forth talking about Mordecai near the courtyard of the harem to find out how Esther was and what was happening to her. Before a young woman's turn came to go into King Xerxes, she had to complete 12 months of beauty treatments prescribed for the women, six months with the oil of myrrh and six with perfumes and cosmetics. And this is how she would go to the king Anything she wanted was given to her, was given her to take with her from the harem to the king's palace. In the evening, she'll go there and in the morning return to another part of the harem to the care of Shashgaz, the king's eunuch, who was in charge of the concubines. She will not return to the king unless he was pleased with her and summoned her by name. When the turn came for Esther, the young woman Mordecai had adopted, the daughter of his uncle, to go to the king. She asked for nothing other than what he guy, the king's eunuch, who was in charge of the harem, suggested. And Esther did what? She won the favor of everyone. She won the favor of everyone who saw her. And he says she was taken to King Xerxes in the royal residence in the 10th month, the month of Tebeth, in the seventh year of his reign. The Bible says now that, and the king was attracted to Esther more than to any of the other women, and she won his favor and approval more than any of the other virgins. So he set a royal crown on her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. And the king gave a great banquet, Esther's banquet for all his nobles and officials. He proclaimed a holiday throughout the provinces and distributed gifts with royal libera liberality, amen. So we see this is a very long text, but I believe we, we, are, we understand the storyline. The areas which are highlighted in yellow are the areas where I want us to focus on. But before we do that, look at something, because we're going to exegete the text, understand it in context and how it is applicable to us. Now, the meaning of the name Higai, amen? Higai was the eunuch under whom Esther had custody. Amen. The name Higai means meditation. The name Higai means word. It also means groaning. It also means separation. So as we go back to the text and look at why Esther obtained favor before everyone and before the king, then we'll begin to understand from a spiritual perspective what um, how she obtains the favor. And using the same measure, we can apply it and receive favor, not only before obscure men, but also before kings. Amen. 
Now we are told here in verse three that she was, the, the, the advice was to place all the women under the care of Higai. Amen. That was very clear. And then later on, we are told that Esther was entrusted to the care, um, entrusted to the care of Higai. And we have understood that Higai means word. It means meditation. Amen. Beyond the Higai who is an eunuch, the Lord is teaching us a lesson through this text. Amen. So she was entrusted to Higai. Now the Bible says something that she, she pleased him and won his favor. She pleased him and won his favor. Now the question we need to be asking our text, ourselves as we read this text is that what did Esther do between the verse three, verse eight and verse nine that will cause her to please Higai to the place where she who obtain or win his favor. We are not told that Esther did anything. We're just told that she was placed, um, Esther also was taken to the king's palace in verse eight and entrusted to Higai, who had charge of the harem. Then we, right after she pleased him and won his favor. The question we have to ask ourselves is why, why did the other um, virgins or the other beautiful ladies not win the favor of Higai? The answer is simple. Esther comes from a God-fearing lineage, a God-fearing family. She is a Jew. And why do I believe that she came from a God-fearing family? Because we know through this, the, the, the pages of scripture in the book of Esther that Mordecai, her cousin, was extremely God-fearing. He reverenced God. And by no means will he raise Esther differently. We see how he had to go through many things because he refused to bow down to Haman. In the same way, he brought up Esther in the same, um, with that understanding, amen. To the place where, when Esther, having such virtues, was placed in a position entrusted to the care of the word and meditation, amen, they were able to resonate. Amen. So a place where he guy did not have to ask anything further from Esther, but to show her favor. Amen. Because when a man's ways please the Lord, his enemies will be at peace with him. What more about those who are not your enemies? Amen. What more about those who are not your enemies? Esther's ways Please, God, Mordecai, who took care of Esther, brought Esther up in the fear of the Lord. So when she is placed in an atmosphere that resonates with her upbringing, she doesn't need to do much. They begin to win the favor of the people there. They begin to please the people there to a place where they show her favor. And when you look at um, Esther's life, amen, you realize that this is just for your own personal studies. It almost appears like her beauty treatment started earlier than everyone else, even though there was a prescribed um, regimen for 12 months, amen. Six months of myrrh and six months of beauty cosmetics and all of those. But we are told that she pleased him and immediately, immediately he provided her with beauty treatments and special food. And then he assigned to her seven female attendants, amen. Why? Because she reverenced God, evidenced by her lineage, evidenced by the life of her cousin who raised her up, and evidenced by how she even behaved while when she got into the palace. So beloved, what is this telling us? That if we will sit, um, if we will make the word of God our lifestyle, if we will make meditation our lifestyle, wherever we find ourselves, because we reverence the word of God, we will experience favor, amen? Because Higai means word and Higai means meditation. It also means groaning and it means separation, amen? Now, let's go down here. In verse 15, the Bible says, when the turn came for Esther, the young woman Mordecai had adopted the daughter of his uncle Abihel to go to the king. Look at what happened. The Bible says she asked for nothing other than what he guy, the king's eunuch, who was in charge of the harem, suggested. 
In other words, Esther asked for nothing else but what her place of meditation suggested and what her, what her place of the study of the word suggested to her. Amen. Because the other ladies asked for so many things, they Esther restricted herself to the suggestion of he guide, to the suggestion of the word, to the suggestion of meditation, amen. And because of that discipline, amen, because of that discipline, the Bible says, and Esther won the favor of who? Everyone, everyone who did what, who saw her, meaning that it is possible to win the favor of every human being but there is a criteria, there is a way to do it. When we will limit our, our, our choices to the choices of the word, when we will limit our choices to the choices of, that come from our meditation with the Lord, we can be guaranteed because scripture says so that we can win the favor of everyone who sees us, amen. Now, looking at this in verse 17, the Bible says, now the king was attracted to Esther more than to any of the other women, and she won his favor and approval. Let's pause there. She won his favor and approval. We are told prior that she won the favor of everyone. In my understanding, that means including the king, but the Bible saw it fit to also specify, emphasize that she won the favor and the approval of the king, of the king, amen, of the king, amen. So we will win the favor of everyone. Everyone includes all categories, but the Lord is also saying that it is possible for us to win the favor of kings, amen. Now, um, what are we saying here? In order to, here I said, in order to win the favor, favor with man and kings included, like we have seen, do not go asking man's opinion, opinions, amen. Why do we say that? Because the other ladies in the, in the harem chose whatever they could, made decisions by themselves. They consulted themselves, I would say. Only Esther, we are told, consulted Higai and limited herself to only what Higai suggested. So in order for us to win favor with people and kings as well, we should not go around asking man's opinion, including ourselves, before, because we fall in the category of man. Amen. Do not ask yourself what you think is the best way to win favor with man. The word of God has provided solution, it has provided step-by-step -step methods on how we can win favor with man. So I said, rather sit under the course study of the word. In other words, sit under the course study of Higai. Amen. Meditate on the word and immediately you receive the suggestion of the word, implement it and see the results for yourself. Amen. When the Lord suggests to us that this is what needs to be done, instead of arguing with him and thinking that our way works better, it's better we submit ourselves to the word so that we can receive um, instructions and receive the favor of people because we need it. We need it. I must emphasize that every human being needs the favor of a man, a human being. Amen. I, I, I've heard a preacher commonly put it this way. God um, blesses men through men, as in people through people. Amen. So if we have a lifestyle whereby we say we say things like God, God will do it for me, He will, but He will use a person. Amen. So we we have a duty, a responsibility to keep the door perpetually open so that He can do it through the people. And we will not now be the reason why there is a hindrance. Amen. Now, what else do we see from the life of, uh, of Esther that we can learn? That we should not follow the prescribed method of the world. Remember when we began, I said that the word of God has everything we need to understand how to obtain favor with people. Amen. So because the word of God has that, we should not follow the prescribed method of the world because it will fail us. It will be very temporal. Amen. So we we'll rather choose the word of God, implement what it says, and then receive favor perpetually. Amen. Because we want to continue to increase. We don't want a situation where we are favored tomorrow and not favored the next day. 
amen, or favor for five years and the next year, five years of disfavor. We don't want that kind of scenario, amen. Now, the third point here I want to emphasize is that we should become carriers of God's presence. Amen. Let's become carriers of God's presence by continually dwelling with the Lord and allowing him to guide us. Why do I say so? Earlier we read in Esther 2.15, the Bible says, and Esther won the favor of everyone who saw her, who saw her, meaning that favor upon a person can be seen. Favor can be seen. She won favor with people because they saw favor on her. But how can you now um, get to a place where you carry favor on you or upon you to a place where people, when they see you, they see favor? There is a way. I went to Genesis 39, verse 3 to 4, and it tells us exactly how we can become carriers of God's presence. It says, talking about Joseph. When his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord gave him success in everything he did. The Bible says Joseph found favor in his eyes, in his eyes and became his attendant. Amen. When his master saw that the Lord was with him, then now Joseph found favor in his eyes and became his attendant. Then he says that Potiphar put him in charge of his household and he entrusted to him, to his care, everything he owned. Amen. So because he saw that the Lord was upon Joseph, that the, that, that the Lord was upon Joseph, now Joseph, as a result, found favor in the eyes of Potiphar. So in other words, if we bring it back to Esther, our case study for now, what they saw on Esther was the presence of God. They saw that God was with her and that presence of God upon her was interpreted as favor. Amen. So, but how do we now become the carriers of his presence? By dwelling with him, by fellowshipping with him, by eating of his word, amen, by praying in the Holy Spirit, amen, the many spiritual things that we do that assures us that we are carrying the presence of the Lord. And when we go around, we command the atmosphere. And when people look at us, they interpret whatever they see on us as favor because God mandates it to be that way, amen. Because no one carries the presence of God and suffers, amen, amen. So that is a case study for... Um, Esther, I want us to look at Daniel as our second case study. And I'm going to read for us Daniel 1, 8 to 21. Now, as I read these stories, I want to, I want to remind us again and again that all these particular um, individuals we're talking about were in the camp of their enemies. But their enemies found favor, were at peace with them. They found favor before their enemies and their enemies um, were at peace with them. Why? Because of the presence of the Lord. Amen. So if you know of an enemy or do not know of an enemy, there is a way out. There is a bailout system in the scripture on how to win the favor of, your, of, the, of the ones who are hostile to you and of those who oppose you in any way. Amen. Now, Daniel, um, the Bible tells us from verse 8 that but Daniel was determined not to defile himself by eating the food and wine given to them by the king. He asked the chief of staff for permission not to eat these unacceptable foods. Amen. Now let's pause there. Why did Daniel refuse to eat um, the food from the king's table? Because history holds that the, the food that were offered on the king's table were also offered to idols. Daniel is Jewish like Esther. Amen. They feared the true God that you and I do fear. Amen. They reverenced him. So in any situation that any situation that will cause them to deviate from their faith and their focus and their belief system, they chose to exempt themselves. Amen. So Daniel chose to exempt himself from eating from the king's table. Amen. But now the Bible says, as soon as he made that decision, Amen. The Bible says, now God had given the chief of staff both respect and affection for Daniel. Just because he made a decision, now favor now has been activated because God takes responsibility 
to make sure that our enemies are at peace with us when we carry his presence, when our ways please God. It certainly pleased the Lord when Daniel refused to eat from the king's table. It certainly pleased him. And as a result, he had to go and the Lord had to go ahead on behalf of Daniel and begin to put things in order for his sake. Amen. So to the Lord will do for us if only we will believe. Now in verse 10, we are told, but he responded, I am afraid of my Lord, the King, who has ordered that you eat this food and wine. If you become pale and thin compared to the other youths your age, I'm afraid the King will have me beheaded. Daniel spoke with the attendant who had been appointed by the chief of staff to look after Daniel, Hananiel, Mishael, and Azaria. Please test us for 10 days on a diet of vegetables and water, Daniel said. At the end of the 10 days, see how we look compared to the other young men who are eating the king's food. Then make your decision in light of what you see. The attendant agreed to Daniel's suggestion and tested them for 10 days. At the end of the 10 days, Daniel and his three friends looked healthier and better nourished than the young men who had been eating the food assigned by the king. So after that, the attendant fed them only vegetables instead of the food and wine provided for the others. Now verse 17 says, God gave these four young men an unusual aptitude for understanding every aspect of literature and wisdom. And God gave Daniel the special ability to interpret the meanings of visions and dreams. Now it says, when the training period ordered by the king was completed, the chief of staff brought all the young men to King Nebuchadnezzar. Then verse 19, very important. The king talked with them and no one impressed him talking about favor, as much as Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azaria. So they entered the royal service. Beloved, King Nebuchadnezzar was not a friend to the Jews. Amen. This is favor with, with a king that is not just a king, but an enemy. Amen. So because Daniel and his friends, his brothers, exempted themselves and chose to please God, God made sure that they found favor with a king who wasn't a friend. Amen. So it's a double blessing right there. Amen. And then whenever the king consulted them in any matter requiring wisdom and balanced judgment, he found them 10 times more capable than any of the magicians and enchanters in his entire kingdom. And look at verse 21, Daniel remained in the royal service until the first year of the reign of King Cyrus. Now, why is verse 21 very important? Daniel is not in his land, amen? He is not in his original place of birth, yet Daniel reigned through four kings. He reigned through four kings, amen? So this Daniel is a great example of one who continues or continued, amen, to increase in favor with people and not just ordinary people, kings for that matter. Why? Because he chose to please the Lord and then the Lord took responsibility over his own affairs, amen. The Bible says like, like we read earlier, Daniel remained in the royal service until the first year of the reign of King Cyrus. Now, at the time you had, Daniel got into that place through King Jehoiakim, and then he went through King Nebuchadnezzar, amen, the one we just read about. He went through King Belshazzar. He also went through King Darius. Then he went through King Cyrus. So when you read about King Cyrus here, they're just in other words telling us that, you know what, Daniel went through, he continued to increase in favor with people, but not just obscured people, kings for that matter. So if we want to get the results that Daniel got, we need to do what he did. We need to take the risk, amen. There are some things that we, we will have to refuse, amen. There are some things we'll have to refuse because Daniel was determined, like we said, to please God. So he remained in favor with God, amen. Now, our last case study for the night is Joseph. We're going to read two scenarios. We're just looking at the first point, how to, how to have favor with people. We need to have favor with God. It is the most important step, and that is why we'll dwell here for tonight. 
Amen. Now, looking at the life of Joseph um, from Genesis 39, verse 1 to 7, let's see how this person in a land not of his origin also obtained favor to people whom I will consider his enemies as well. Now, the Bible says, now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt. Potiphar, an Egyptian who was one of Pharaoh's officials, the captain of the guard, bought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him there. The Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered and he lived in the house of the Egyptian master. Then verse three says, when his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord gave him success in everything he did, now, verse 4, Joseph found favor in his eyes and became his attendant. Potiphar put him in charge of his household and he entrusted to him, to his care, everything he owned. This is the same scripture we looked at as we compared how Esther, when everybody saw Esther, she won their favor. So too was the case of Joseph. And of course, we've already established that it is because the Lord was with them. And also, if we allow the Lord to be with us by prioritizing him in everything we do, then we can be guaranteed that he will activate favor on our behalf. Amen. This, the Bible says now, from the time he put him in charge of his household and of all that he owned, the Lord blessed the household of the Egyptian because of Joseph. The blessing of the Lord was on everything Potiphar had, both in the house and in the field. So Potiphar left everything he had in Joseph's care. With Joseph in charge, he did not concern himself with anything except the food he ate. Now Joseph was well built and handsome, and after a while, his master's wife took notice of Joseph and said, come to bed with me. Amen. So that's one aspect of the favor of, uh, that was experienced by Joseph. Potiphar looked at him. Potiphar is a person of high caliber. Amen. He looked at Joseph because the Lord was with him. Joseph found favor in his eyes. Now let's look at another person that Joseph found favor with. Because beloved, when the Lord is with you, you will have the, 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 the whole point is that you should find favor with all men. All. Because everyone who looked at Esther favored her. Everyone, including the king everyone amen so we have a prayer point tonight amen so genesis 39 as we conclude genesis 39 19 to 23 still talking about joseph it says when his master heard the story his wife told him saying this is how your slave treated me he burned with anger Amen. Because Potiphar's wife lied against Joseph and Potiphar got upset and imprisoned Joseph. Now 20, Joseph's master took him, talking about Potiphar, and put him in prison, the place where the king's prisoners were confined. But while Joseph was there in the prison, the Lord was with him. The Lord was with him in Potiphar's house and in the prison behind bars. Amen. What can separate us from his presence? The Bible says he showed him kindness and granted him favor. Who showed him kindness? The Lord showed Joseph kindness and granted him what? Favor in the eyes of the prison warden. Before it was in the eyes of Potiphar. Now it is in the eyes of the prison warden. Amen. So we can find favor with everyone. It doesn't matter what our situation is. That is the hope we have from the word of God. So the Bible says, so the warden put Joseph in charge of all those held in the prison. And he, made, he was made responsible for all that was done there. The warden paid no attention to anything under Joseph's care because the Lord was with Joseph and gave him success in whatever he did. So, beloved, it doesn't matter where we are. You might be in the king's palace. You may be behind bars. You may consider yourself worst, the worst person in society, but it doesn't matter. The guarantee we have is that wherever you are, for as long as the Lord is with you, you will experience the favor of God like Joseph. 
to the place where he wasn't only made charge of everything in Potiphar's house, but he was also, because of favor, made charge of everything in the prison. Amen. On one condition, that the Lord was with him. But if he despised the way of the Lord, then he wouldn't be able to be in charge wherever he finds himself. Amen. So what are we saying? That we can find favor with believers? Just a few categories. Unbelievers, kings, leaders, obscure men, children, just whatever or whoever rather when we prioritize the Lord. So we do have a prayer point tonight, amen? Because maybe if you examine your life, you realize that you have lost favor with X, Y, and Z. But the Lord in his word has provided for us remedy, solution, amen? That if his presence will remain with us, that he will make even our enemies. Enemy meaning those who oppose us, and those who are hostile towards us to be at peace with us. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to end there for today. We have examined just the first point. I believe that we have so much to pray about. And I believe that everyone on the line can resonate with something. So we're going to leave the floor open for comments. And then we truly have to pray favor provoking prayers tonight. The Bible says we should pray about everything. We shouldn't worry about anything. We should pray about everything. And we should also pray continually. Amen. So favor is a prayer topic. If you've never sat down to pray about favor, tonight is the opportunity for us to pray favor-provoking prayers. In Jesus' name, amen. Over to Pastor Issa. Amen. 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 I know, I believe everyone in the house needs favor. Yeah. You may be favored in one area of your life, but I believe, you know, there are other areas where we are seeking God to favor us in that area. Favor with man. Praise God. What actually, you know, resonated to me is Haggai, who was the, um, the one who was grooming Esther, the meaning of his name. Meditation, word, groaning, and separation. So I, I wrote it out in order i said separation meditation the and the word as the second and then groaning as the third so separation is waiting separating ourselves and then we while we we are separated we meditate on the word with groanings and uh, you know i'm like wow if this is the person who was grooming esther we have that person each and every one of us has that person who will groom us to find favor with the king and favor with everyone. Favor with the most high. And that's his word. And I thank God because our conference that just passed some few weeks ago was on waiting. So separation, I consider that as waiting. Separate yourself from everything else and let it be only about God. And then you go deep in his word. You meditate, you contemplate, you, you reason with him. Because he, he's calling us to come and reason with him over his word. So I think this is still in a way tied to our conference that, you know, and now we are seeking God for favor. Praise God. So thank you so much because this is indeed the formula. Maybe we're wondering like, how do I do this? I realize that in Christendom, you know, sometimes we try to figure out how to go about things. We want favor, we want things to happen. We don't have a way out. And then sometimes we start feeling like you will be the one to cause men to do it for you. No, if you wait on the Lord, you meditate on his word. And then I believe he will bring that to pass. He will cause men to favor you. You don't even, sometimes people will favor you that you don't even know them. You never dreamt of crossing paths with them. So that's what I got out of this. And I am grateful. These days, actually, since after the conference, I've been, you know, that's something that has been laid in my heart, waiting, no matter what. The, the Lord is like, 
it's not about rushing and being everywhere and just gathering more information and not sitting down to you know listen to him and talk with him or go back through what you have learned and apply so god is like you can have all of that information and still miss me if you don't spend time with me so that's very vital and we see that esther was separated for a while because she could meet the king and have that favor so thank you so much dr mukong God bless you for this wonderful word. And I believe we all have eaten from the table of the king today. And it is delicious. So he's inviting us every day, every hour to come. As human beings, we eat, we start with entree, we go to the main meal, dessert, and all of that. So with God, it's the same. There is no there is no time that you know you can just say you know what i've had enough there is something mm. there is always something mm. so for us to continue to chew on so and i believe this is um much help if i get into my time of meditation i believe it will really help me to even think about it because now it's like emphasis i have to separate myself i don't have to be everywhere i don't have to be busy all the time I have to separate myself, take some time and meditate on the word. And then I groan, even if it's favor, favor in your education, favor with your job, favor with your children, favor in your household, your marriage, whatever it is. I believe we just need to find it in the word. Haggai groomed Esther. And now we have the word right in our own hands in every household to groom us. So we give god the glory for this great word and it's just coming to add add to what we've been receiving so thank you again i think that's what i got and i want to ask if there's anyone else who you know have a contribution or a question you can go ahead and just unmute yourself and speak please amen Amen. Yeah, I like the part where you say like we are responsible in order to activate the favor because if we don't activate it, it's not going to work. So it's a responsibility also. And I believe that it's a huge one, just like what you were explaining from those, the, the Haggai, the, the point that he attributed to Haggai. That Haggai means that, 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 that in the first time to hear that also. So we need the responsibility to take all those one-on-one -on -one and really do a work on it. So thank you so much. Glory to God. Any other contribution or question, please? Hey, good night. Thank you so much, as always. Thank y'all so much for um, the teaching. Um, the story of Esther, of course, resonated as well with me. And I really actually have been studying Esther as well lately. So I know that was also a confirmation that, <laughs> you know, that's that's where I need to be. I'm in the right place. Um, but what I did realize in the book of Esther, I don't see God. I don't see the word God. I don't see the word Lord very, you know, in that um, story. But in her life, it's very present. The Lord is obviously very present. So it definitely showed me that it, that it isn't about, you know, saying Lord, 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 but when God is present in your life, it will manifest itself. He will manifest himself in your life. You don't even, you don't even almost got to try. He's just there and it just shows in every aspect. So yeah, thank you. You're very welcome, Ms. Desiree. Any other contribution before we pray? Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for sharing this message with us. For me, what I learned is, um, as a child of God, I have to maintain the level of righteousness that Christ has placed in me. Because if you look at the life of Joseph, when he was tempted, he did not give in to what everybody would be doing or what the world was saying that it was okay, your master's wife. You didn't go into her, but she came for you. So just do it with compromise and do it. But he didn't do it. He stood on what 
he knew from the Lord and from God's words as he said no to temptation and ran away even though the woman lied on him at the end of the day, the Lord blessed him for remaining faithful. So if I remain faithful or the body of Christ, if we remain faithful in all that we do, not when somebody is watching, but when no one is watching and we remain faithful, the Lord will favor us and he will cause men to favor us as well. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. We can take one more contribution or equation and then we move on to prayers, please. I can, I can add uh, uh, one more uh, contribution. I think for me in the past, as I was uh, in the past, as I was praying, usually I would thank God for everything that he's favored me with, you know, by just comparing myself to people who don't have what I have. But I think when I, when I, I wasn't really asking God for favor, you know, sometimes I'm asking God for grace and mercy, but I've never, you know, put it that way in, ask, in asking God for, for favor. So I think this is a really good lesson. And it's not a coincidence because, you know, a friend of mine today, randomly she just sent me, they should say, you should meditate on Genesis 39, verse one to five. And she was talking, she went on to talk about, you know, asking God for favor. And, and you know, she, you know, she, I think she copied something from uh, a sermon from someone. So it, it's just such a coincidence. So I really, really appreciate. Thank you so much, Mom. Robert, and thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah, I want to, before we pray, there is a testimony I want to share. One of our um, pastors, she, she moved to Cameroon for ministry and then she visits here and goes back. So she left yesterday, the day before yesterday I was meeting her. And when I went, she's been trying to get her visa to Cameroon because she's now an American and the embassy wouldn't give her a visa on time. So the day before yesterday, she spent almost the entire day at the embassy and they said, go come back the next day. And her flight was that next day. And, uh, you know, when I went there, she was telling me she doesn't know what she would do because if she happens to wait and they don't give it on time, she may miss her flight. So as we were talking, another pastor called and was just discussing with her that there is a military doctor in Cameroon who has a clinic and he wants a pastor to, you know, to come there and be a part of their team so that he can, he or she can be counseling the, the, the patients. And so that was the very first breakthrough that I, you know, while I was there. But then this one's concern was that the next day she didn't have anybody who would take her first to the embassy and then from the embassy directly to the airport. So while she was contemplating, the distance was too far even for me to offer. So I just said, well, let's see how tomorrow comes. Let her keep trying. And then the next day I'll reach out to find out, you know, what we could do if nothing happened. So guess what? In the morning I called her. I called her at about 11. I said, oh, so did you succeed to find your way to the embassy? And she's like, you don't even believe what God did. God sent somebody from the embassy to bring her visa to her that same night. Mm -hmm. And they asked her if her names were spelled right and everything. So, you know, I just, it just brought me back to the scripture where while Mary Magdalene, they were thinking about uh, who rolled the stone for them to anoint the body of Jesus. And then the angel had already rolled the stone and asked them why, they were, why were they worried or why were they looking for the living among the dead? So I was like, that is what God does. He favors us. That was favor because I've never heard, especially with the Cameroonian embassy, they will torment you. Even if you have your mother or father's cops trying to transport, they will torment you, but they brought her visa all the way to her house. They favored her. So then on top of that, the military man in Cameroon now is opting that he will pick her up from the airport, which means she will not go through any friction, no control, nothing, nothing. As she's getting out of the plane, she's being given some special treatment. So I just wanted to say, you know, this woman has been serving in Cameroon taking care of the sick, helping on her own, not asking for help from anybody. She kept doing it, going to the hospital, praying for the sick, helping those who needed food and all of that. And now somebody is asking if she needs an office. Do we need to prepare an office for you? They are coming to pick her from the airport and everything just working. So I want to tell us that, you know, when God favors you, 
you will never be able to compare your life before and the life that you know you, you are living with the favor of God. Wow. So I just want to encourage us that you know when the Bible says, "Do not get weary doing good, because in due season you know you will receive your reward." I want us to be encouraged and know that no matter what you're going through, that prayer of favor, pray the prayer of favor. When God favors you, it's always above your expectation, above what you are even praying for or asking. So I just testified just to let us know that God still does work miracles. Amen. So Amen. Uh, Pastor Mildred, I know you'll be leading prayers. So over to you. Okay. Thank you, Pastor. So we thank God for all the feedbacks. So let's just, I have two scriptures here which we could use to pray today. Um, let's look at this. Let's use some we're going to add this to everything else that we've heard. Um, Psalm 102 verse 13 says, You will arise and have compassion on Zion, for it is time to show favor to her. The appointed time has come. That's our first prayer topic. That we will pray and ask the Lord, where you see Zion, put your name, that the Lord will arise and have compassion on Mildred, for it is time to show Mildred favor, amen, because now is the appointed time, amen. If you need favor in your life, I wouldn't pray for you. You pray for yourself using this as a, as a pointer, amen, and as a guide, amen. Let's unmute and pray. You need favor. I need favor. To the extent that you need it, it will determine how you pray tonight. Let us pray. Father, tonight I praise you for your word. I stand Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. Amen. Now, Exodus 12, 36, I'll read it from, to you from the NLT, New Living Translation. It says, the Lord caused the Egyptians to look favorably on the Israelites, and they gave the Israelites whatever they asked for. So they stripped the Egyptians of their wealth. Beloved, let's understand this. The Bible says that when a man's ways will cause enemies to be at with him, the Egyptians and the Israelites are not friends. Amen. But the Lord is telling us here that he will cause the Egyptians, the enemies, those who are hostile to us, amen, those who oppose us, to look favorable or favorably on us, amen. So if you, if you can identify an Egyptian in your life, today the Lord is saying that before that Egyptian, you will find favor. I don't know who your Egyptian is, Amen. I don't know who your enemy is, but if you know that you have an enemy or will have an enemy in the future, if you know that you have someone who opposes you or will oppose you in the future, pray like you want to change your situation. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word. Amen. You caused the Egyptians to look favorably on the Israelites. Father, I thank you because when a man's ways are pleasing, you make even his enemies to be at peace with him. Father, today I declare that before every Egyptian, I am favored. And my Favor to pray for us, amen. And the reason is because she is God's amen. favor. The name Anna is the name because my daughter is also Anna, but I gave her the Hebrew version, Chana, amen. And that comes from uh -huh. in the in first Samuel. Hannah already means favor, but she is Hannah favor, so she's the best person to pray for us. Today. <laughs> favor, amen. Favor, favor means favor. Favor, favor, Pastor, favor, favor, pray for us. Yes, Lord. Amen. Thank you for the honor. Amen. Father God, we thank you so much. Tonight you have spoken. And according to John 17, 17, whatever that you have spoken to us is the truth and nothing else. Daddy, we believe in your word. We have called on you. We've asked and we know that as we've asked for favor, mm -hmm. favor is going to be our portion in all that we find ourselves doing. Favor will be our children's portion in the name of Jesus. Tonight, oh God, we pray that you favor our teacher as well. 
and increase her more and more that she can always pour into our lives as you pour into her life. Lord, I thank you so much that even as we are living, Lord God Almighty, your favor will be our identity in the mighty name of Jesus, where we have struggled. Father, because tonight your favor has come upon us, we will no more struggle in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Father, people who are connected with us, those who looked down upon us before, tonight as we have asked for favor, Lord, we know that our prayer has been granted, and therefore, Lord, we give you all the praise. In any area of God that we've asked for favor to shine, Father God, we are thanking you because I know that we are coming back to testify. There is nothing that you cannot do. Help us, O oh God, to trust in you. That as we've asked, so shall it be. We thank you and we bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen and amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Hannah Favor. <laughs> amen. You're welcome. I receive. Amen. Amen. We share the grace together. <laughs> okay. May the grace of our Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ the love, love of God, and, love and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. 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 Of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.